getting better already. Shall I, uh, shall I save them and wear them just for you? You think I'll ever get to be a sheriff? Not unless you mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> By the memory of a song While the rolling Rio Bravo rolls along While the rolling Rio Bravo rolls along Next week, John Wayne again, this time as, le as a Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Cavalry, campaigning against marauding Indians in the John Ford classic Rio Grande. And that's at 7.15 next Tuesday evening. On BBC One now, the news. Here on two, we reach the semi-final stage of our pot black competition in a few moments. Wednesday evening on BBC Two. The great painting on view at 7.25 is Tiepolo's The Triumph of Virtue, presented by Edwin Mullins. And at 7.35, a tribute to the champion horse who recently celebrated his 21st birthday. He was always very, very difficult to beat. I mean, he always went fast, he always went clear, and um, didn't really give the rest of us much, much of a chance, really, in, the, in those days. At five past eight, Malcolm Muggeridge looks back to the 30s and to his work in MI6 during the war. <laughs> when one read about the intelligence operations in the war, the glow of victory completely disappeared because, for instance, Admiral Canaris, whom we regarded as our number one target, turned out he was on our side. Yeah. Philby was working for the Soviet government. I mean, who was working for what? At nine o'clock, mash and breakfast with a difference. Listen to that. Snap, crackle and burp. Then at 9.25, David Lloyd George finds life as an MP coming between him and his wife. Okay. I'm going to miss you so much. At 10.25, a glimpse of the training behind the scenes at the Peking Circus. That's followed at 10.45 by News. Programmes for Wednesday evening on BBC Two. Now on two, Alan Weeks introduces another snooker session in Pot Black. Welcome to the first semi-final of the Pot Black Championship of 1981. It'll be played over two frames, and the player who wins both frames automatically goes into the final. But if the two frames are shared, then it's the total points that count. Now let's meet the players who are concerned in this first semi-final of the 1981 Championship. And first, the winner of Group 1, former world champion Ray Reardon. <laughs> and the runner-up in Group 2, Canadian, Jim Weich. Before the game starts, let me remind you that the highest break so far is 79, and that was scored by Kirk Stevens. Well, now on to the game, and over with the referee, John Williams, are the two players, and over in the commentary box, your man at the mic, Ted Lowe. First frame, Ray Reardon to break. And his opponent, the young Canadian, 25-year-old, Jim Weich, making his first appearance in Pot Black.
Jim White has had a very successful first putt black. He lost to David Taylor, but defeated Australian champion Eddie Charlton and that controversial figure from Ireland, Alex Higgins. Ray Reardon here is the only player in 81 pot black who is undefeated. Ray's victories have been over Cliff Thorburn, the current world snooker champion, young Steve Davis, who is the United Kingdom professional champion, and Canadian champion, Kirk Stevens. Just to remind you of Alan Week's words, the semi-finals are over two frames. across the table. I think a trifle too far. Fifty. <clears throat> Eight. 
Eight. This young man traveled from Calgary, Canada, especially to England, to take part in this pot black. There's a red into the center. Sixty. Seventeen. That's the brown ball very near the blue spot. But obviously it's the blue that I think Jim will go for. Twenty-two. Yes. In white, 22. <laughs> Just off the mark there, Jim White, but uh, as you see, he's left uh, things a little bit difficult for Ray Reardon. that one but they all count is Jim White. Perfect position. Seventy. Twenty-two. 
25. 